What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel everybody. As you see we got the tow truck hooked up to the trailer. We were planning on heading up north uh, on 127 to go pick up another another truck, another 6 liter. Um, it fell through for today. The guy couldn't find a title, just ran into a couple issues there. So we're going to use this beautiful day here in Michigan to uh, get some other things accomplished. Uh, we have an injector to do on the tow pig. So we are going to unhook this trailer, get that done. I'm going to do a cold start here for you guys. So hopefully we can go pick up that truck maybe next weekend. Really hope we can do something with that. So uh, let's kick off this video. Let's get this injector done. I'm going to do a step-by-step, -step, kind of show you guys exactly how to do everything. Uh, it's injector number one on the passenger side there. So let's get it banged out and... Uh, We'll kick off this video. Alright, so as you guys just heard through our new exhaust, full 4 inch to a 6 inch black tip. Um, that's the 18 inch long one. Awesome, love it. Uh, you actually heard the injector missing. You can kind of hear it kind of lope there at idle. That's actually that number one injector missing. Like I said, it is on the passenger side over here. So we're going to get this all snatched up here and uh, show you guys exactly what you got to do intercooler pipe here valve cover obviously and uh, we're going to hopefully get this knocked out today hopefully only a couple hour job being number one here on this side so let's get it all right guys so the first thing you're going to want to do is remove your intercooler pipe uh, i like to remove it at the turbo and then at the intercooler it's just a 11 millimeter bolt at this point i do have this coolant filter here so this is going to make it a little bit of a pain i don't normally take this uh, coolant part off um, we are going to have to remove our boost tube here get that up out of the way this piece here that goes right there to this valve undo that put it up there um, let's see here our glow plug connector right there we're going to unplug that get that flopped up out of the way and then both of our harnesses here the icp and this glow plug control module, all of that will come off. And then we'll flop these electrical connectors up and out of the way over here. So I'm going to start removing some of this stuff. And uh, hopefully we'll get this uh, valve cover off here shortly. All right. So at this point, you can see I have everything unplugged. This is the power wire for your glow plug control module. That's going to be on your battery over here, a 10 mil there. Uh, once that's all removed, it does look like if you have a coolant filter, we are going to have to remove... Uh, this coolant pipe here, which is going to leak some coolant. Um, so we're going to have to hopefully get that plugged off before it leaks too much. <clears throat> and then once that stuff is out of the way, there are 10 millimeter bolts or nuts right there. There's one up here. I believe there's another one on this side and then one underneath uh, the module as well. And then this whole bracket will pull out of there. And then the only other thing at that point is our trans dipstick here. That's held on by a 10 millimeter nut. That one is, that's a tricky one to get to and get off. All right, so we did end up having to drain our coolant. As you see over here, I think it was mainly just because we have our coolant filters. So that pipe, uh, uh, we ended up having to, because it comes across here, the center part, uh, we ended up just having to take all of that out, draining the coolant. But as you can see, now we have our wires uh, completely flopped over. Our trans dipstick is off of our stud over there. I found that using a quarter inch ratchet with a mid-depth 10 mil is the key to getting that one off. So now that all of that is cleared out, we're going to start taking our valve cover bolts out. Right there, there are a bunch of 12 millimeter heads. So we're going to get this valve cover off and then uh, we'll start be able to pull the oil rail and then get that injector out. All right, so our valve cover is off finally, and now we have exposed our oil, uh, our oil rail here. You can see this right here is your dummy plug, and then the one back there is your standpipe. Uh, mine are actually updated. The way you can tell 
is that that size right there is a 12 millimeter. If they haven't been updated, they will be a 10 millimeter. Uh, both of mine are 12 millimeters, so they have already been updated, but we're gonna go ahead and replace those anyways. <clears throat> um, so we're gonna go ahead and rip the standpipe out. That has to come out in two different pieces uh, in order to get it all the way out. And then we can start using a T30 to pull all of our Torx, uh, Torx bit or Torx screws out, and uh, then we'll be able to pull this oil rail off. Um, generally, when I pull this off, you gotta you kind of use a screwdriver, pop it off right here, pry in there, pop it up, and then I'll lift it up and set it up on top of the uh, rocker box here. It'll kind of hook into those spaces, and then I'll let it sit there and drain all the oil out of it, um, and then I can set it over in my valve cover over here. So let's get that standpipe out of there and then uh, we'll get this oil rail off. All right guys, so our oil cooler is off. The other part of the standpipe is sitting in there. You can see it, just oil kind of pouring out of it a little bit. This is our injector number one. This is the one that is bad. Um, next thing we're gonna do is pop out this, this clip. You can see the little metal metal tab there you're gonna to want to push on it like that and then just pull on the harness and it pops out and then to push the connector of the injector through the rocker box you're gonna use a 19 millimeter socket and you can kind of just tap on the back of it and that'll pop out it's got a couple tabs on it and then it'll pop this harness out and then you got if you have an 03 to 06 truck you're gonna have a t40 size just on the other side there. If you have an 07 truck, more than likely it will be a T45. They did change injector hold down sizes. So let's uh, get this all wiring undone here and then uh, we're gonna pull our injector out. There you go guys. There's the part number for a new injector straight from Ford. Two year warranty on these. <clears throat> Packaged really, really nice. I believe 03 and early 04 models have a different part number. Um, this will be for late 04 to 07 trucks. This is the injector you're going to want to replace it with. Here's our old one. Everything was sealing fine. My guess is just wear and tear. Um, I'm thinking maybe in the next video we might tear this injector apart and see if there was maybe some stiction going on. Since it, uh, it seemed to act more when it was cold uh, than when it was warmed up. Then it would just kind of smoke when it was warmed up. So... It's a good thing that we're getting that replaced. Um, this new injector looking all pretty. No assembly required on these. You don't have to put any O-rings on or anything like that. You just take your rubber nipple off over here. And then now we're going to go ahead and oil each one of these O-rings. The two here and then that one there. And then we'll go ahead and get our injector hold down around this. And then uh, we'll get it in. And then we'll start talking about going back together. So let's get her done. All right, so we got our injector back in. Our injector hold down is not all the way tight, but it is uh, tight. Um, and now we're gonna push our connector. This lettering here, you wanna face that up, and then you're gonna push it back through the hole in the rocker box. And you'll notice that it can be kind of difficult. If you don't hear it clip, then you did not get it pushed all the way up through. See, like mine, is there's a little bit of gap there. <clears throat> so what I like to do, What I like to do is take a screwdriver and you got a bolt, that bolt underneath there. You can go right underneath that bolt and then just pry up just a little bit. And boom, and you just saw me pop it in. So now that that is in place, we're gonna go ahead and torque our hold down. Uh, the Ford manual says 24 foot pounds. That is not gonna be enough. Um, a lot of people have issues with it blowing past that copper seal um, at the bottom. So uh, we are actually going to torque them to 31 foot-pounds. That is the torque spec that Warren Diesel recommends. Um, on all of their aftermarket sized injectors, they say 31 foot-pounds is the way to go. So um, they say in order for adequate uh, sealing of the combustion chamber and whatnot, um, from entering the injector 31 foot pounds is the way to go so we're going to get that torqued down we still have to pull our other piece of the standpipe out over there 
and then we're gonna get our new one in and uh, keep going ahead so let's get right, for those guys that need it this is your updated standpipe number this is only gonna be for late 04 to 07 trucks and then this is your dummy plug number W302908 <clears throat> those are the two updates we're gonna get that one installed once we get the high pressure oil rail back in then we'll pull the old one and stick our new one back in as far as our updated standpipe this is what it looks like and it's updated because they have these little plastic white washers that back up these o-rings I believe it's there and then on this top one that's that's the real common spot for them to blow out if you have the 10 millimeter allen head instead of this one the 12 millimeter so <clears throat> now for installation on this side we actually have to separate it right here and put this in as two pieces obviously oil all of our our separate o-rings here and then we'll torque this down once we get our oil rail back in so we're going to separate it right here um, into two pieces and then we'll stick this long portion down in there after we oil our o-ring down here and then we'll be able to put our oil rail in and then we'll stick this other top half down in and torque this as well as our new dummy plug so we're going to separate this and keep going one more thing to note we have our new uh our new stand pipe in there you can see it down there and then uh the other thing I want to note before you put your oil rail back on is just to take a little bit of oil and in our new injector here, because it's dry, we're going to squirt some oil down in there. Just like that. Let it start pouring out a little bit. That way we don't uh, jeopardize that seal, that top seal. Those are common to blow out eventually too. So uh, now we are all set to line up our oil rail, get that installed, <clears throat> and then we'll get all of our Torx screws in. Um, those those do have a torque spec, they're not, they're not, it's not very much, um, so I usually just go good and tight. It's hard to get a torque wrench on the in on this side anyways with the oil rail on, especially on those bottom two. Uh, so generally, I just work my way from the middle outward, you know, kind of in a star pattern, and uh, tighten them good and tight, um, but not too tight, so. Uh, and then once we get those in, then we will move to getting these installed and getting those torqued down. And then uh, at that point, it's pretty much just reversal of procedure. And uh, I'll show you guys one more little trick for getting the truck started up. All right, so with the oil rail in, we have our new dummy plug there and our new standpipe back there installed. They aren't torqued down yet. These torqued down to 69 foot-pounds. Um, <clears throat> and then at that point, guys, once you've torqued those down, Make sure all your uh, your oil rail bolts are nice and tight and those are good to go. Uh, you are pretty much ready to go back together with everything. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm going to get everything back together and then uh, I'll check in with you guys. There's one more little trick as far as starting up the truck. <clears throat> we got to put, uh, we're going to have to filter the coolant back in and then uh, we'll get this thing going again. So stay tuned. I got one more, couple more tricks to show you guys and then we'll have this thing running. All right, guys, so we got the coolant back in. We got our whole passenger side wrapped back up. Everything's tight over here. Uh, make sure you get your map hose back on, our little uh, vacuum hose for that valve there, our clamps for the uh, stuff there, our coolant filter is tight. Um, everything's plugged back in. ICP, glow plug control module, our wire back up here, our trans line, make sure that's back on. Everything's all good and tight. We are looking good. All right, so the one trick that I wanted to show you guys, because we just tore into our high pressure oil system, uh, we are gonna have to build oil pressure back up in that oil rail. We're gonna have to fill that oil rail back up with oil. So one of the tricks I wanted to show you guys is over here on the passenger side fender, right there, this, piece right here you're gonna want to squeeze that and then pull that wire out just like that so now we have this piece here with a little pin in there and we're gonna take that pin and we're gonna to touch it to the positive side of our battery and this is the jumper cable for uh, the starter this is if you have this unplugged your you, your truck will not start because it won't engage the starter so this is the main power for our starter so instead of turning on the key and running our FICOM our glow plug control module and any everything else our dash everything like that um, this way we can just 
crank the engine using our little jumper wire and this will help create oil pressure and then we can use the key uh, to do the initial startup so that, that way we don't kill, end up killing our batteries or anything like that or running our ficum low on voltage so um, we're gonna hook up our batteries real quick and then uh, we'll get to cranking right, so with the key in the off position in your truck uh, we're gonna take our starter wire we're just gonna crank on it for roughly 30 seconds um, and then we will stop we'll let the starter cool down for maybe five minutes and then we'll do it one more time um, with the starter wire and then we'll plug this back in and then we'll go in the truck and crank in the truck so uh, we're gonna use this first for the first 30 seconds <laughs> Alright, so this is our round two. After we let the starter cool down for five minutes, we're going to crank on another 30 seconds. Alright, so we waited another five minutes. We double checked our oil level, double checked our coolant level. We're going to go ahead and try and fire it up. <coughs> sometimes, you, sometimes you do have to uh, put more oil in after doing something like this, so... Make sure that everything's good to go. It might take a second. We do want to watch our gauge over here. That is your low pressure oil. So let's give it a shot. We have low pressure. And boom. Look at that, nice and smooth. That's what we like. No check engine lights. It's common for a little bit of smoke at first, but you can see it's actually cleared up pretty quick. So generally that's what I like to do. You know, I do two cycles of uh, using the starter wire and then I will use the, I will actually hop in the truck and start the truck. Um, and that usually works out really, really well. I've seen a lot of guys use just the key and they'll have to do it like four or five times and, and then their batteries start to die because they're running their Ficum and glow plug module. You're just running so many accessories that your batteries end up dying. Um, and then that's really ultimately not good for the Ficum either. So um, when you do that starter wire, all you're running is just the starter. You're building low pressure oil and then you can build the high pressure oil and it works out really, really well. So. Another thing I'd like to add, guys, is you do want to drive the truck for a little while and try to push some of the air out of the oil system. Um, it may seem kind of like it's idling kind of rough there for a little while, um, but do a couple of heat cycles, drive it, um, and push that air out of the oil system. So it might take a few a few trips before it actually starts running correctly um, until it gets all that air pushed out of the system. Hopefully this video gave you guys a really good idea on how to change an injector on these trucks. The passenger side is usually a little bit easier than the driver's side, but on the driver's side, you know, once you tear off a bunch of stuff, you know, there's a lot of access on that side versus the passenger side. So they're relatively the same um, when it comes to difficulty. Um, so hopefully that gave you guys a really good idea. Um, a couple of the afford updates, some tips and tricks for doing it. So hopefully that gave you guys a really uh, really good helping hand if it did make sure you guys leave a comment as well as like this video I really enjoy making these how-to videos showing you guys how to do something on the 6.0 power stroke one of my favorite engines so Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in on left lane diesels Like I said if you enjoyed this video smash that like button leave a comment down below if you guys are new subscribe and we will catch you guys on the next video Peace.